What is up, my MS homies? That's just funny. Say, sorry I'm a little bit late popping on today. I'm laughing because I, I just turned on my camera to start filming for you guys, and it literally looked like I was, I was in a fish tank. I was like, what is going on? Like, everything was all wall-eyed and crazy, and I looked like I was in a fun house, and I was like a midget that was like that tall and like that wide. I was like, should I go live? Should I not go live? Let's freak him out a little bit. <laughs> so it was pretty funny. But anyway, welcome to uh, welcome to your second exercise for this uh, series on core exercises for balance. Now, like I said before, there is a ton of core stuff that we're going to be doing in the MS gym. But this is basically our first circuit, our first series, series one uh, for core that we're putting these five exercises together. So yesterday, oh, I'm sorry. This is the MS gym and why are you here? <laughs> if you're just tuning in for the first time, the MS gym, our purpose is to, or my purpose is to come here and provide you with exercises that are going to help you really manage your systems, retrain your brain and your body, how to work better and, uh, and get your, get your muscles, get your brain, get your joints all fired up so that you can live a better life. My goal of the slow down the progression of MS so you can live a higher quality of life. All right, so let's get moving. Yesterday, we talked about the dead bug, which everybody thought was a super funny title. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the living bug. <laughs> no, actually it's called a hand march drill, but it's kind of the opposite of what we were doing with the, uh, the dying bug or the dead bug yesterday. So this exercise really works. The deep core through here, it works your what's called your transverse abdominus muscles, Works a little bit of diaphragm, a little bit of pelvic floor, a little bit of these spinal stabilizers back here called your multipedis, uh, which is going to stabilize your spine. Make sure you have a healthy spine. Make sure you're standing upright and tall. And all of, and this exercise is one that helps you move better, change direction, protect your spine. And literally, I've been doing this exercise for years, and I still do it myself every, before every single workout, walk, uh, run, anything like that, because it's super, super, super super effective. So let's go play. So what we're going to do here, <coughs> we're going to go hands and knees. So you're going to go wrists are nice and flat. Now, a lot of people when they do this exercise, they're like, oh, my wrists hurt. Okay. Which is fine. I don't blame you. I ain't mad at you, but uh, that just means that you have some inflammation in your wrist. And what you really want to focus on is instead of having this small little hand like this and being way forward over your wrist, I want you to spread your fingers as wide as you can and kind of sit back away. So you want to have your shoulders right over your wrists, your hips right over your knees. We're going to start on a level one hand march or a live bug. And because there's other stuff you can do, you can add your legs in, you can move way forward like this for a deeper core. But for right now, uh, just starting out, I want you to really focus on the form. So what I want you to do is grip the mat with your fingertips, pack your shoulder blades. So I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this. I want it nice and flat. So push that chest forward. Okay. Then what you're going to do is I want you to pull your belly button up. So I'm going to let my belly hang out like that. Okay. And you can see the arch in my back up here. So you want to like we, like we were doing on the pelvic tilt, pull that belly button up and kind of scoop your hips underneath you and sit tall. You should have very little pressure in your wrist. That is a lot of my wrist. That is not a lot of my wrist, okay? Toesies back here, our hip width, you're locking the toes underneath, and with your head, I don't want to see a drooping head, I don't want to see it up like this, I want you to think about holding an apple underneath your chin, like that, so your spine is nice and flat. So you're going to pull your, your shoulder blades back, you're going to pull that belly button in, and you're going to make sure that you're nice and stable, okay? Now, this is a very small motion, all you're going to do is just lift one hand, the height of about a deck of cards. You do not want to shift side to side here. What you want to do is just lift your hand and pull those abs up like crazy. When I say that, it doesn't mean suck in. It means keep the belly button from falling down. So you should have this nice, here I'll tuck my shirt in a little bit. So you shouldn't be falling down like that. You just want to pull up. See? Bloop, whoop, bloop, whoop. So you want to pull those abs up. So you just lift that hand from by bending the elbow. And you go one, two. Put it back down, keep those abs in, lift the other hand. Two, two, back down, lift the other hand. Three, two. Now, if that's too easy for you, put your hands forward a little bit and, and move your hips forward a little bit 
and proceed, okay? But we're going to go through 10 of these, and then I want you to try to practice 20 of these today. I'm going to move forward just a little bit so you can see. There you go. 20 of these today because we're going to probably do between, we're going to probably do 10 to, 10 to 20 on Saturday when we go through this. All right, so fingers nice and wide. Belly button in, chin tucked, shoulder blades packed. I'm a happy bug. Let's rock. So it's a one, two, switch. Hold those abs in. Pick it up. Two, two, hold those abs in. Three, two, hold those abs in. See, you notice I'm, my body's not shifting at all. I'm staying straight. Imagine you have a glass of wine, really, really good Bordeaux, on a shoulder blade and on your hips. So four glasses of wine on you. If you spill, major party foul. Don't do it. Okay, here we go. So, three, two, switch. Four, two, switch. Five, see I'm not doing much except that I can feel it a ton in my abs right here. Down, six, two, and down. Seven, two, and down. Eight, two, back down. Nine, two, last one, ten, two. Now I'm gonna do about six more just for the just for the beefcakes in the house, I'm going to move it forward. So I'm going to push my hips pretty far forward here. And then I'm going to go. This is a lot more core. One, two. Oh, yeah. Two. Two strong abs. Three. Two. Back down. Notice I'm still not shifting. Four. Two. Abs are in. Five. Two. Last one. Six. Two. Ooh, yeah. Building up that core, baby. I love it. So... That's what you're doing here. It's called a hand march or the alive bug in our case today. Um, it's a great exercise to do if you have back pain or you wake up with an achy back or just kind of feel off. This is one of the best exercises to do right when you wake up because it gets your body fired up, gets your core fired up, gets your mind fired up. And even as, I mean, my, my, uh, you can even tell I'm a little bit out of breath from doing it because holding that hand up and going from a four point stance to a three-point stance is very challenging on your deep core, and that's going to help you that when you're walking foot to foot, that your, your core is going to kick in from side to side and really stabilize you so you don't fall to the side, you don't fall forward, you get good rotation throughout your hips, and then you can maintain your balance better, all right? So I want you to practice your dying bug, set of 20, and then I want you to do a set of living, five on the live bug, set of 20, I want you to smile. I know that you're being taken care of by Trevi, and I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. So thanks for being here. I will talk to you soon. Hopefully tomorrow I won't be in a fishbowl when I show up. <laughs> talk to you later.